Hey, Blissey, could you make some more OC poses for me? Sure! Hey, Lightning, can you do some art for me? Of course, I'd love to! Hey, Blissey, you mind drawing me a little something? Um, sure, that's n no problem, uh... Hey, Lightning Bliss, uh, do you think that I could request some art? You know, if it's not too much to ask? Well, I suppose so, I... Can you make me an art piece? Wait, just a moment! Well, hey there, Lightning Bliss, I heard you were doing requests. I'd like a piece of... Oh, lucky me, I land on something soft. Uh, mind getting off me? You're kinda heavy. Shark? What are you doing here? You were just... Wait, I'm not heavy! What the hell? Ugh. Look, please, I'm tired of my generosity being abused here. Just, just go away! No more commissions! <laughs> Um, what are you talking about, Blissy? <laughs> now I know how rarity feels. Everybody just walks all over me. They take what I do for granted. Doing things for free. I can't do it! I can't do it anymore! Blissy, take a deep breath and calm down. Maybe you should visit Dr. Wolf and talk about this. Or maybe we can talk about rarity and how she felt the same way. <laughs> I already owe Doc for painting on his wall. I can't go back there now. Okay. I'm ready to talk about rarity. Getting into a stupid channel. Like a diamond ring of the highest rarity And even more beautiful inside Reach way down deep and I'm sure you'll find That she can bring that little something called generosity So we follow up on Rarity when she's entering a big fashion show That will help her get more notice in her shop Good on you, Rarity. It's not like you got enough notice already from Sapphire Shores, or Princess Cadet's Wedding, or Hoity Toity. <laughs> Anyways, the show is taking place in the city of Manhattan. Of course, her friends are coming too as she personally invited them. A good show of her generosity. After a brief discussion of her pulling strings to get tickets for a famous musical in the city, and a quick skip of the least of my favorite songs for the entire season, we then come to Rarity showing up for the show on time. Though apparently not early enough to the host's request. Rarity, I presume. You must be Prim Hemline, the host of this grand event. <laughs> how do you... Miss Rarity, how is it that all your competitors are here half an hour early and yet you arrive seconds before we begin? Ah, uh, <laughs> just lucky, I guess. <sighs> she scares me. Why didn't the princess just get this pony to face off against Tarek? I'm sure she could send him running back to his cage. <coughs> Anyways, we then get to the point where we meet her acquaintance of the Ponyville Knitters League. Um, I imagine Granny Smith is also there. Suri Polomare. Who is obviously not the villain, I'm sure she's just gonna appear this one time and that's it. We then get to the end of the fashion show where the totally not villain asked for a splotch of fabric but Rarity being as kind as she is, decided to give her a whole stool of it. But wait my good Sharky, she actually is the villain! Don't you see? Just like all the other ponies who rip away my art for free, taking advantage of my good hard work. Suri steals Rarity's fabric and totally uses it to make a new line, literally walking all over her like she were Fluttershy. It's not fair, I tell you. Not fair! Lissy, <laughs> do I have to get you Rarity's fainting couch? <laughs> um, anyways, we then transition to the next day. At least as much of a transition as LLP could have, which is none. Where we see... Le Gasp! Siri has stolen Verity's whole design! c called it Anyways, we then cut to Verity freaking out... Uh, for one's not on her friend account... Where her friends console her trying to get Verity to calm down. 
calm down? How do you expect her to calm down? The poor mare had literally had her hoofmate fabric taken away after she offered it to help another out of good generosity of her heart. And this is how she is treated? This is cruel, man. Just cruel. You understand what I'm feeling here, right? Um, I guess? She worked so hard to get where she was for that show, and she still found it within herself to be generous to a rival even. Granted, I suppose that was naive of her. This is a fashion show. She's competing against other designers for her line to gain attention in the city's local stores. Even though, yes, she doesn't need it, that still doesn't mean she deserved this kind of response. What Suri did was cruel, and for her own personal gain. This is an antagonist that thrives on the hard work and shoulders of others. We then get to the next scene, and the first scene with... Coco Pamel. Now, before you leave those hate comments, no, I don't hate Coco. She's just the weakest of the key givers. She had almost no development apart from just being cute. Honestly, I can't really understand why the analysis community hasn't ripped her character to shreds yet. I might have an answer to that. It's because she, as a character, was supposed to be nothing more than one of those doormat assistants who figured her way of doing things like rarity was no way of getting by, since she was learning from Surya of how to make it in the big city. When she realized there was another way, that's when she came out of the box. Though it wasn't on screen for very long, other than to just get the key. Well, yes, she is a doormat character. Don't forget that so is Fluttershy. Yet, she gets plenty of development. What I'm going at here is that her being a doormat character is not really an excuse for her not growing. I just wish we saw more of Coco so that we could see her grow to more than just the ooh, cute stage of character development. I suppose that's fair. But now we cut to the part where we see Rarity quite literally treat her friends badly while they are slaving away trying to help her with her new line. The guilt trip speech, saying basically what Suri told her, gotta be tough to make it in the big city. Wow. That's... that's... that's not me. I don't want to be like that, abusing my friends so that my work can stand out on its own. If it weren't for all these friends making requests for me, I wouldn't get noticed in the first place. Glad to see that Rarity saw that in the end, though, with that little rainbow highlight. Doesn't that make you want to smile? Why aren't you smiling? Let's just get on with it. We then get to the reprise of the previous song, which was surprisingly heartfelt due to the situation. After which, we get to the part where her friends are about to leave when Rarity gets there and explains what was going on, after which she apologized. So the moral here would be, don't change who you are if ponies take advantage of your generosity. What matters is if you want to be generous to others, even if you risk not receiving it back in return. So, feel better now, Blissy? I guess so. I mean, it's good to earn money for my commissions, but that doesn't mean I can't give some away now and then. Well, I better get back to the library. I'll see you later, Blissy. Yeah, my dimension won't shine itself, and I'm pretty sure there's a sort of rainbow magic just dying to slap me back home. See you later, Shark. Um, before you leave, could I, um... Huh? What was that? Can I hug your tail? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Can I hug your tail? <laughs> Okay, Aeropony gets one.